Ja? Oké, okay, nou laten we maar gewoon beginnen dan. I'll try to do it in English because there are some English people here. I'm looking at you. Oké, okay, um, I'm here today to talk about the Media Library module. Um, has anyone by any chance already tried it out or installed it before? Oh, there are some people. That's cool. Well, uh, I would really like to tell you all a little bit about what we did to uh, get where we are right now. And I'm going to start with a little bit of history. Um, when looking back, you see how important it is to have something like a media library module in core. Some of the problems we ran into while uh, implementing all the features we would like to have. The redesign we did for Drupal 8.7 to solve some or most of the problems we had. And then we're going to take a look at the implementation. So how do we build it? What are the components of the media library? And how can you build upon it, extend it, etc. And last but not least, we're going to take a look at the roadmap. So what are all the features we still would like to have and implement for 8.8 and even beyond. So my name is Sean. I am Sean B on Drupal.org. I also tweet stuff, mostly about Drupal, media, and media library. I'm a freelance Drupal developer. And my account is almost 10 years old. So that will be a huge party. Probably me on my couch with orange juice or something. And I'm uh, one of the maintainers of the media and media library modules. That's why I'm also excited to tell you all about the hard work we did for the last couple of years to get here. So the little, a little bit about the history. Um, we added the media module to core in Drupal 8.5. And since it's an entity reference field, uh, you need an any reference field to add media to your content, for example, a note, a blog, uh, article, blog post, whatever. And with any reference, you get this beautiful autocomplete widget where you can type the name of your media and then add the media to your article. Uh, of course, that means for content authors, if they want to add media to their blog posts, they first need to go to the media page, so admin content media, then you create some images, a video, or whatever. After that, they go back to their article to create it, and then they can reference the things they just add. And I think anyone who ever created content before knows that's a pretty horrible way to add media to your content. So, what we did in Drupal 8.5 in the media module was add this little sentence above the autocomplete widget, the form altered the standard widget, and we just simply added a link to add media page, and when you click it, you open in a new tab, there you can add your media, and then you can close your tab after you're done, go back, and then find the media you just added. Still not perfect, but at least it was a little bit easier than it was without the link. And then we worked really hard for Drupal 8.6 to get the first version of the media library, which went in as an experimental module, and as you can see, this is already a huge improvement over what we had before. And most importantly, we had a thumbnail, which is for a thing like media, of course, very important since most media things are visual. Uh, so you can directly see what you're interacting with. And in the widget, we also added two buttons that would work within the context of your article or note, for, for blog post or whatever. And when you click the browse media button, you open the modal, and in the modal you get a view of all your media items in the media library, and you get like the benefits of the views filters, which already are a huge improvement over an autocomplete field, of course, to find the media you're looking for, select it, and add it to your content. There's also an add media link here, which allows users to directly add media, also from a modal, uh, I say media, but in this case, only files were uh, media at that point. So you could add a file and then upload something to your library and directly add it from the context of your content. While this was a huge improvement, of course, it was still not perfect. And there were some problems we encountered with this first version. So one of the first things uh, we noticed while implementing all the features we would like to have was that the designs we were working with were very outdated. The designs were made probably in the beginning of the media initiative, at least a 
couple of years ago. And since then we learned a lot, we changed some implementation details. And yeah, we just figured in every feature we were trying to implement, this is not working, we need a new plan, and then we need to go back to the UX team, get approval, get a new design. And for each issue, that was very painful to do, and it was also very time consuming. So one of the things, for example, that we didn't uh, completely had in the design was a plan for other media sources. So in the beginning, we had file and image, where it was a file-based media, and you could just upload a file, and that would become a media thing. But then we added remote video to core, which is a way to add YouTube or Vimeo uh, content, and they need a link as inputs. Then there's also Contrib, of course, and custom modules, which can basically create any type of media source. So let's say you want to go crazy and create a media source for a media type called location. You can use an address field as source input. And that, of course, works totally different from having just a text field for a link or a file input field. And the media library just had no solution to solve that in the interface at all. Uh, another thing that was in the original designs is that browsing media and adding media were both in separate tabs. So the user had to make a conscious choice, do I want to browse for existing content or do I want to add something new? And of course users don't always know which of the two things they need at that moment. And the last one, type disambiguation, uh, is a hard problem. So for example, you have a media type called header image, and then you have a media type called poster, and they both accept JPEG images. When you upload a JPEG image, and you have both media types enabled for your field, you somehow need to figure out, is this a poster or is this a header image? And um, if you upload 10 files at the same time, you want to add 10 posters, having to select a media type for each of the files you added is just a horrible thing to do to the user. So all these things made us believe that we are not prepared yet for the rest of the features we want to implement and we need to stay, take a step back and just rethink how the media library should look and how are we going to fit all these features in to what we're building. So we decided we need a new plan. And the way we thought it would be best to get to this new plan is just start a redesign. We uh, had a media sprint in Barcelona, which is a awesome place to work. If anyone of you want to do it, I could highly recommend it. But no, we actually did something that week. We just came together and our goal was for that week to come up with new designs. And hopefully if there's time, also create a proof of concept to make sure that all the things we designed are actually achievable. And also as a media team, we decided that this would be a horrible thing to do on our own. So just the media people come together and just think of what we should do not a good way to do it. We need more people, and especially uh, UX experts. And if we are asking people to join us, then why not ask a framework manager to be at present? Because they have more deep understanding of all the things that are already in core, how can we implement it, and everything we design needs to be, of course, able to make it as core patches. So we need more expertise. And so we came together. Uh, this was probably taking at the beginning of the week, since we still looked a little bit happy. Uh, and we started on Monday just with intense discussions, like, how are we going to solve this problem? And we came up with a plan, made some designs to fit it, we burned a lot of paper. Then we wrote some code, and somebody would always come up with this weird ad case, of like, oh, what if you want to do this, or what do you want to do that? And then we had to basically start over again. And we went in circles for at least two days. And we almost gave up. Because we came to the conclusion that a media library is a very hard problem to solve. There is no such thing as a one-size-fits-all media library solution. And instead of trying to think of how should this thing look for all the use cases, we decided it would be better to define some constraints or assumptions that help us focus more on one specific use case, or at least limit us a bit to make sure that it works for some use cases and not all of them. And one thing we immediately decided is that this thing should work for the simple use cases. Um, 
And if you have a very complex media need in your site, so you have thousands of items and a dam integration and all stuff like that, it's okay to sometimes let contrib handle things. Not everything has to be solved by core. So the list of assumptions we made is, uh, first of all, uh, we want to have a design that works for untrained users. So everybody who installs Drupal for the first time needs to be able to use this thing kind of intuitively. Um, it's not only that the new users that will evaluate Drupal need to be able to understand it, but also there are a lot of content authors who don't work with the system every day or every week. Some users just come back every couple of months and they also need to be able to understand what's going on and it just needs to work. Another assumption we made is that users add media most of the time. Of course, reusing media is a very important use case and that's probably one of the reasons why we have the media library at all, is to also select existing stuff. But for most of the cases we notice in real life, it's just users adding stuff. Also, a lot of the sites um, don't have thousands upon thousands of media items. So it doesn't make sense to make a super complex design that facilitates a huge media library. Also, users know which media type they're adding. If you are creating your content, you probably know if you want to now add a YouTube video or upload an image. You don't decide after you open the media library, you go in with the, to the media library with a clear goal in mind. And also most sites do not have a lot of media types. The standard profile in Core now ships with five media types, but we noticed that a lot of the sites maybe add a couple, but not hundreds, or not even dozens. And also for a specific field, you probably only enable three, four media types at the most. You probably don't have a field that enables 16 media types and let the users figure out, okay, you do whatever you want with it. Also, users don't mind using modals. This was already something we inherited from the first version of the media library that went into 8.6, but also when looking at competitor CMSs like WordPress or whatever, um, we noticed that a lot of media libraries open in a pop-up or a modal, and that is something that's okay. Also, users understand that working with the media library affects other users. So if you add something to the media library, it would be directly be available for other users as well. And people who add stuff to the media library with their stuff would also be available to you. And the last thing, and this is also a very important assumption we made, is that users prefer clarity over a low click count. So instead of trying to add all the features in a single window, it's okay to sometimes make users do one thing before they can continue with the next. As long as it's clear, it's okay. And so, with these constraints in hand, it would help us to make hard choices for the design. Uh, Christina helped us come up with this, uh, and it was one of the first mock-ups of the media library we used to implement everything. So at the left side, you see a list of uh, media types. I hope this is a little bit clear. Um, users select first if they want to interact with images or remote videos, for example. And then at the right side, you start at the top with uh, an ad form, which is specific for your media type. So for images, you see an upload field, and for remote videos, you see a, a text field for a URL. And below that, you see the view, also as we had before in 8.6, with, with the filters and uh, the media items, thumbnails, whatever. And also a very important thing we added in the right corner above the view um, is a way to switch between a grid and a table view of the same information. Because when you interact with documents, for example, having a table view is way easier to find the document you're looking for and you don't need the big thumbnails with a big PDF icon in it or whatever. It just doesn't add as much value. So being able to switch is from a usability and accessibility perspective very important. Then the implementation. So how did we achieve all this? Of course, uh, since the way you add media to a piece of content is an any reference field, we started with implementing an any reference widget, which has basic configuration where you can order the media types that are enabled for your field, 
So let's say for this field, images are, images are probably the most important type. You can make sure that they, that the media library opens with the image tab enabled, and you can switch that per field, which is super useful. Then the widget, as it's shown empty on your piece of content, you only have one button now, which says add media, which is a clear way just to start and open the media library. When the media library is opened, you again see all the things that we wanted to implement are already there. Um, at the left, you see the image media type selected by default. You can also switch to another tab to see all the other pieces of media types. And at the top right, you see an upload field for this thing, uh, which would be a URL field for the remote video, of course. Then you see the views filters, and you see the thumbnails with the delicious pieces of food. And you can switch between the grid and table view. Uh, and at this moment, because it's an HTML5 file field, you can drag and drop things on there, but having a drop zone area, which little, looks a little bit more like something you can drag something into, is uh, still something you want to add later. Um, so I've added a file in this case, and there you see a form where you can add the required fields for the specific media item. In this case, it's an alt text, but since this is just a form, display, uh, you can add all your fields that are available for your media type to this uh, form as well. So if you have ex important taxonomy fields that need to be filled, you can also add them here. You have a little X button in the top right corner to make sure that when you upload three files and only one of them uh, is actually what you wanted, if you change your mind, you can just remove that directly. And if you selected stuff in the previous screen, it also shows you here what you've selected, so you see now a complete overview of all the things that you are about to insert. And at the bottom you have two choices. You can either save or select, which brings you back to the media library and shows you the thing, the thing you just added with all the other selections. And for content authors who use this more often, you also have a save and insert button, which skips the extra step. But we wanted to make sure that the save and select button uh, is the primary action, so to confirm to users the thing you've just added is now in the media library for everyone to see, which we thought was really important to have. And at the bottom right, you see the three of five items selected, which tells the user this field accepts only five items, um, and you have already selected three, so you can select two more. And then after you've insert it into your content, the media library which looks like this. You see the thumbnails of the things you just added. You can drag and drop the things to reorder them. And if you want to add more media, you can basically start over again. Of course, having pictures of this is cool, but having a video is way cooler. So let me just show you this. Switch this. Here at Umami, we have the ability to display additional related photos and videos at the bottom of our articles on our site. We use Drupal 8's media library, which makes it really easy to create and reuse multiple kinds of media. As an Umami editor, I was tasked with adding some mushroom photos to the end of an article about mushrooms. This is where the media library comes in handy. I can edit the article, scroll to the bottom, and click the Add Media button. The media library opens, and I can see media used elsewhere on the site. One of the existing images is of a mushroom, so I go ahead and select that. I want more than one photo, though, so I'll upload a few more. I can upload as many files at once as I need to, so I choose three images of mushrooms. Once they're done uploading, I notice that one of them isn't a mushroom. That's okay, though, because it's easy to remove that item before saving. Once I enter any required fields, metadata in this case, I can save and immediately insert the new media into the field, but I choose save and select because I want to add more media. This field allows images and remote video, so I see a tab for each of these media types. I switch to the remote video tab and paste a URL for a video hosted on Vimeo. 
I now see both my images and video in the widget where I can rearrange them to my liking. Once happy, I save the article and scroll down to see my additional media displayed as I would expect. select form plugin 
which you can add as a field to a view display. And that just makes sure that the checkbox is rendered uh, to select something in the media library. And it also provides you with the insert selected button so you can add something to your content. And then there's a new thing we introduced to create the grid versus table view. And that's what we call a display link plugin. We added that to the views module. So in the header and footer area, you can add uh, special plugins, for say the header text, for example. Now, in uh, Drupal 8.7, you can also add a display link plugin. And what that does is it creates a link from one display of the view to another display of the view. So in this case, you have the grid and you have the table view. And when you render that link, it will keep all the pager information, keep all the filter information. So if you configure the two displays exactly the same, you can switch between two different displays of the same view, show the exact same different information, but only another view mode or a field with tables or whatever. And this is not only very powerful to have for the media library, but also if you build a web shop, for example, and you want to present the same information in two different ways, it's very helpful. So we thought that should better belong in views than in the media library. Um, something we had a lot of attention for was usability and accessibility. We had weekly demos to the usability team to show all the progress of each different I issue got demoed multiple times. We got a lot of feedback, which was super helpful for us. And I really think that helped us to get the most out of the issues we were trying to fix. And also the access accessibility reviews were really helpful. We not only learned that, but we now make sure that users with a screen reader, reader or users that only use the keyboard, it just works. Even though we make heavy use of ajax -y stuff, and normally that's not always accessible by default, but we made sure we got it right. Yeah, accessibility. <laughs> okay, the roadmap. So what do we have, want to bring for Drupal 8.8? .8? We have a couple of stable blockers which prevent us from marking the media library from its experimental to stable. We need uh, WYSIWYG support. So if you have a CK editor field, you should be able to click a button, open up the media library, select whatever media you want, insert it in the CK editor, and it should render in, I don't know, some view modes, and uh, WimLears is working really hard to get it in for 8.8. .8. Then we want to make it easier to use the media library in custom forms. So if you want to have your own form or configuration page and you want media added in there, you should be able to do that and uh, do that very easily as well. So we are trying to build a service which you can implement where you can um, define something like an opener is what we call it. So if you are a field and you say, I'm the opener, this is the way uh, I want the media library to be open. So I want this media types available and stuff like that. But I also expect the media library to return the selected items to me in this way. So an end reference field, for example, needs some IDs, but the CK editor needs a piece of HTML insert. And the openers can just define a service and tell the media library what the input and expected output should be. Uh, we have some accessibility improvements left to make. I think there are now two stable blockers left. Um, patches are there, so we hope to get that in as soon as possible. And as you asked, we want to get drag and drop uploads working. There was an issue for this, and this week we had a big discussion about this in the usability meeting. And basically the approach we had for this is now officially denied, or <laughs> I'm not sure I would say it, but we uh, came to the conclusion that we have to start all over again, which, uh, I don't know, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> um, then there are some should-haves left. I'm not really sure. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not 8.8 .8 material, but maybe it's not even Drupal 8 point something, but probably Drupal 9 point something, but we want to have overrides of metadata per usage. So for example, you have an image showing a busy intersection with a traffic light and a yellow cab. You can have the image in a piece of content where you want to talk about, hey, this is a busy intersection, but you can have another piece of content where you want to highlight, this is a picture of a yellow cab. And users should be able to do that easily. 
And for now, you have to do like workarounds where you add a paragraph field with a custom text field and a media field. And in the render areas, you have to do some magic to make sure that everything is fixed. Well, that should go and we should just support that from forward. Um, something that's really important for usability and accessibility is having a selection overview. So when you go to the one tab and you use a filter and on page three you select the media item and you go to another tab and you select the media item and on another tab you use some filters and you select something that you could easily get look, lose track of what you have selected. And it's also not easy to go back to a tab because you could lose the filters or lose, you change the page and you would not directly see what you've added. So we need some way to communicate to the user this is what you have selected already. And then there are some more usability tweaks, some things we postponed because they were not blocking, like wording of certain buttons and having some interface text is improved. We know there is room for improvement and uh, it's not blocking, but we still want to do it. And same goes for accessibility. So we got the basic uh, accessibility right, but of course there are still a lot more things we can do to make the lives of uh, people using screen readers, for example, better. Then for nine point something, um, I think the main goal of the media initiative is getting the media and media library module enabled by default in the standard profile. I think that's the point when we can really call this initiative done. So what we want to do is we want to replace the file and image fields by media in all cases, which is a super hard problem because there is still a big feature gap between file, image, and media. Media by definition is reusable and file and images are not. So that's something we need to think about. How are we going to do that? And also for existing sites, are we going to do a migration path and how should that work? Uh, for example, if you have now a file field where you have three PDF documents and an image and you switch to media, how do we know to which media type each file should go? There's probably no one size fits all migration that we could just magically turn on and it would just work. So we need to think about how are we going to do this and how would we make it easy for sites that want to migrate to do it. But I believe that this might be something that should be solved in Contrib, but I don't know, it's still something on our roadmap and we need to think about it a little bit more. Um, for you who are interested, you can visit our roadmap issues. They are very up to date. Every time we fix something, we make sure it's updated in there. So you can always see our progress. And if you want to help out, please take a look at the roadmaps, find something you're interested in, find me on Slack or in real life. Don't come to my house, by the way. But, uh, I would be happy to help you. And uh, we welcome new contributors very much. So please, if you have time and like this, help us out. Then there's this DrupalCon event in Amsterdam where I would like to invite you all to come and visit and also help us out because I will be in the sprint room all week probably. So if you think that's a nice way to start with media, I will be there and uh, be happy to see you. And that was the end of my presentation. So if there are any questions, please shoot. shows only media entities. So for something to be in a media library, you need to make it a media entity. And that probably means that you need to duplicate at least some of the information from an external system 
like Google Drive, but you also have like complex DAM systems. Um, and yeah, we need some, some basic information to make it known to Drupal that this is there. And the way you do that is probably to have some background migrations where you just, uh, I don't know, it's sometimes the URL is just enough to create at least the basic information so we can patch the thumbnail and whatever. And to make that information known to Drupal, but you probably need to have at least a media entity for all these things in your external system. I have thought about this problem before, and um, I think users know folders, of course, from their uh, normal systems, but folders are also kind of limited because your media can only be in one folder. And the way I organize my folders would be different as another content author would organize their folders. So just having a folder structure does not necessarily solve all the problems. Um, we do allow, of course, since media is fieldable, all the solutions we get to um, filter nodes, for example, also to filter media. So I believe that taxonomy is probably a good way to do it. So you can have multiple taxonomy terms. And if you have like a nested taxonomy uh, structure, you can have like basically fake a file folder structure and have the same image be in multiple folders where you just find it easily. And if you override the media library component for uh, vertical tabs, you could, for example, present that taxonomy structure in an nested way where users get the feeling that they are working with folders. Um, well, actually, it's just a taxonomy. So I think this the infrastructure that we have could make it possible to behave like a fake folder structure, but basically using a taxonomy. It would be cool yeah. to have a module in Contrib that does yeah. that. really awesome. Um, I was wondering, um, you could, is it also possible to use that at some point for other entity references? For like, for nodes, for custom entities or users? Where we currently always have only this kind of autocomplete field. Do you think that would be possible sometime in the future? Um, I think that will probably not be done by a media library module and entity browsers specifically created to fix that problem. And I think the infrastructure wise, it would technically be very possible to implement something similar uh, and not only work for media, but also work for nodes because the problem, we're basically working with entity reference fields and things referencing another thing. So the problem is pretty generic and it could be structured a little bit in a way that, uh, that it works. But I don't see that landing in core very anytime soon. And, uh, We've got so many things on our plate that it's probably not on our priority list for the coming years as well. So I hope that answers your question a bit. Thank you, Sean, for all the work, first of all. Uh, then I don't have any questions. Yeah, I have some, but it's all on my talking time. I, uh, I did love uh, the DAM system for I mentioned a couple of times. Later on, there will be a presentation media and a custom dam system and there will be mentions of a lot of contract models so if you're interested in customizing this experience you should go to that one. Shameless plug but I like it, I'll probably not see it. Local videos are actually already implemented and possible in core. So it's uh, it's enabled in the standard profile. 
I mean, firstly, always advise clients to do remote videos, but you can totally do, and also uh, local audio files. They're also in core already. So if you don't do anything, you get all media types, and which also include audio and uh, local videos. To uh, the file upload procedure. So before you create a file entity uh, and while uploading it, you can just add validation to that form or to the entity itself as a constraint or something and just say, hey, I, al I already have something by this name. Are you sure you don't need something like this? That would also be a very cool module to have, by the way. So uh, if you are for creating it, I would think that a lot of clients would be happy to have that, yeah. Um, there is somebody who worked a lot on uh, making sure that you can migrate from Drupal 7 files to Drupal 8 media. I'm not sure where it is, but I think I had a tweet somewhere that, <laughs> that I retweeted that has the more information about this. Um, but the crop is a different story. There's crop API module in Drupal 8, and there are some several mo modules built on top of the crop API to uh, make sure that you are able to crop stuff in Drupal 8, but I don't know how that relates to Drupal 7 and if there is already someone who wrote migration uh, yeah, has a support for that. So for that specific part, I'm not sure if I can uh, answer your question. But you, you can add crop to the media, so yes. see it when you upload, but you can see it Yeah, I didn't install it because it's not in core, but there are contrib modules that you can use to uh, to add crops to your media. Yes. In the entity reference, is it both ways? Can you look up uh, where the media uh, is used? I wish. No. Um, any reference are, by definition, uh, reference. Uh, if you have a parent entity, for example, a node, which references something, and the information of the reference is stored with the field, which is on the parent referencing stuff, which is uh, a real pain, because now we don't exactly know for a media item where is it used, and we can show information about this, which also is something we could really use if you want to define access to something. For example, if you want to have private media, it would be great to know what the parent is and do you have access to the parent and only if you can access the article or the blog post then you would be able to access the media item related to it. But Core doesn't provide that, that information. You have the entity usage module in Contrib, which I've also worked a lot on, which works really well. Shameless plug again. But um, it's not in Core and it probably won't be in Core anytime soon. But when talking about Drupal 9 and how media can replace file and image, this is definitely a topic that will come up a lot of times and we probably need to figure out how to do it. But having reliable information on where something is used, uh, I don't even know where to get started. It's a hard problem to solve. So um, if 
finding the ground on the node would be, be could be really relevant there. Uh, is that something that would be possible as well and later on? Yeah, so in Google Dev Days, Romania, uh, I think two or three weeks ago, uh, we had some discussions about how we should implement the overrides of metadata. And we thought it would be really cool if the storage of this doesn't care about which metadata you're overriding. So we decided that we probably won't enable overrides for only all texts. We probably just provide an API where you are able to override anything. Uh, being able to override something like fields, so also for, for example, a thumbnail. It could be that you want to override a specific YouTube thumbnail for a specific usage of the video. And I think that's very much related to what you're asking. Can we override the crop information on the source field? Yeah. And uh, it will probably not be in core ever. Uh, so this is something that should be added to by contrib, but at least we want to make sure that the data storage and the infrastructure to be able to do that is there. And uh, yeah, so it, 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 it could be done and probably uh, will need to be done in contrib. Okay, cool, thanks. Okay, thanks. I think that's it for, today, for, uh, for now, Michelle. So you can all uh, go to the next session and uh, grab a coffee in the meantime. Shall we want to thank you for your uh, session? We have a small gift for you so that you can uh, take home and thank make you. some uh, geeky food. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.